let's get right into it. Uh, let's talk about protein, fam. I got a bunch of people talking to me about, hey, talk to me about diet. Uh, how much pro protein do I need to be giving my dogs? Uh, you know, I want to maximize growth. I want to do this. I want to do that. I'm going to tell y'all right now, uh, as far as pups is concerned, my point of view is that uh, protein is definitely necessary. But if you over proteinate your dog, I don't even know if I said it right or if that's even a word, but if you give your puppy too much protein, what you might end up doing is causing a problem. It's called knuckling over, okay? And this is usually, uh, this usually happens uh, when the pup is receiving one, too dense of food, too dense in calories that is, and too high of protein, okay? And you, you'll start noticing whenever, whenever they're stepping over with their foot, it starts knuckling over, okay? The fastest way to fix that, fam, is simply reduce the density of the food and reduce the protein. Put them on that for about another two or three months and you should see everything clear up pretty well. Um, a lot of times, uh, because of the culture that the bully game revolves around, uh, you know, you got people, you know, they want a three month old pup to be, I don't know, 80, 100 pounds. And what they want to do is, you know, feed the stuffing off, this, off, off of this dog by giving them high density puppy food, you know, with all this protein. And, and, and you know, you hear them brag, you know, I'm, I, I gave him, you know, eight, eight egg whites and, and three quarter chickens and, you know, a pound of pig lard. And God knows what else they'd be giving him to try to get the dog to gain. And uh, what I keep telling people is, fam, you got to realize when you buy an American bully, uh, especially that first, you know, year and a half, their growth plates, okay, their growth plates don't seal until they're at least a year and a half old. So if you add weight to them, two things are going to happen. First thing is, if if you have if you're getting an XL or or, or bigger, uh, what's going to happen is their bone is probably going to grow a lot faster than their soft tissue will. <clears throat> so. What is soft tissue? Well, we're talking about tendons, cartilage, ligaments, the whole bang. What's going on with that is that gets very little blood supply, okay? And whereas the bone, that's where the blood is actually being made. So the bone is actually growing a lot faster, okay? And it takes time for this soft tissue to catch up. So if you start feeding protein, especially raw protein like ground beef to your puppy, uh, on a daily basis looking for that growth. Well, tell you what, initially you're gonna get it. You're gonna start seeing the bone growth because ground beef actually activates what's called um, IGF-1, which is the uh, growth hormone, which, which all mammals have, us humans have it as well. Now, when you activate that growth hormone by giving raw, raw uh, ground, you're making that bone grow even faster. So the soft tissue was already behind the power curve, and now you just made the bone grow a little bit faster. So what ends up happening is um, once you start adding weight to that, now you have two factors that are playing against the soft tissue, fam. You got the bone that's growing too quick, and then on top of that, you're adding weight to the dog. Now, if you know anything about soft tissue, I'm gonna break it down for you, okay? These tendons and these ligaments and whatnot, okay? Uh, they're having to pull, okay, and, and hold the dog together. Um, you know, they're designed maybe for the bone to be about yay big, okay? And as you're giving this food and this, this bone is, is, is growing, I mean, it comes down to basic physics. Now, this particular tendon or ligament uh, is going to have to, you know, compensate that much more. And it's not able to because it's not getting enough blood supply uh, because they're not meant, you know, it wasn't meant for soft tissue to grow as fast as bone. And that goes for all mammals, not just dogs. So this is the main reason why I keep harping, and most people keep harping, that you need to keep your pups light, you know, for that first year and a half. Uh, if you ever get a chance, check us out, uh, QBN Kennel whether it's on Facebook or Instagram or whether you, you download our app, QBN app, uh, you're going to see, I, you know, one of my best productions, you know, his name's Iron. <clears throat> Iron right now is, is, is a year and a month old, okay? 
Iron's got straight feet. He's got straight back. He's got proper rear angulation. He's got everything that you're looking for. He was XXL, or better yet, because XXL doesn't exist, he was bigger than XL uh, at eight months, okay? His owner uh, constantly calls me, and I had him. I had set up a diet plan for Iron, okay? His owner constantly calls me and tells me, you know, I think he's hungry. Yeah, let him be hungry, fam. Let him be hungry. At the end of the day, you got to plan, you know, your, your diet for your dog, not, not to starve him, but you got to keep him light, especially uh, that first year to year and a half so that, you know, uh, these growth plates uh, are able to seal uh, correctly. And also, you don't want to stretch ligaments, tendons, or cartilage, fam. The minute you do that, you could automatically be putting east-west on your dog, and the pro probably the dog would have never been east-west to begin with. Uh, but you probably caused that by making that bone grow faster, by stimulating the growth hormone, by feeding it raw meat. So again, fam, I'm going to tell you right now, here's the best advice I think I can give you. Get yourself some large adult dog food. Large adult, not puppy. Large adult, okay? And feed your dog large adult dog food anywhere between uh, 24 20. That's a 24-20 rule. I used to call it 20-20, but at the end of the day, there's no such thing out here in the market. I haven't seen it, uh, which is 24% protein and 20% fat, okay? You don't want to go above 24% uh, protein, especially when you're dealing with a puppy, okay? And the reason I'm telling you to get the large breed dog food is so that you can feed them less dense, less caloric food. This way, the dog doesn't put on weight He's able to eat and feel satiated, but at the same time, he's not putting on weight that's going to be causing all these other th other issues. At the end of the day, by the time the dog's, you know, three to four to five years old, he might start, you know, even suffering from, you know, joint issues, arthritis, who knows what. And at the end of the day, it comes down to overfeeding the dogs. Okay, so again, fam, you want to prevent knuckling over. Fastest way to do it is low-dense uh, caloric food with a 24-20 balance and uh, make sure that also you don't have your dog jumping uh, if it's a pup and you don't have them like uh, pulling you know like pulling weights or anything of that nature at the end of the day fam if you're able to wait out that year and a half you're gonna have your dog sealing in the correct structure at that point you could go ahead then and start adding some weight and start adding some supplements to make the dog you know gain more muscle and whatnot uh, at that point, bone growth, for the most part, at least the growth plates have been sealed. Uh, usually the way our bullies grow is first they're going to grow up, then they're going to grow wide, then they're going to grow their noggin. That's usually the way it goes. Um, I've seen some bloodlines do it a little different, but hey, I'm just giving you a general rule. Again, fam, uh, this has been Raul from QBN Kennel. I'm going to ask you to download our QBN app. Also, if you think what we're doing is good, make sure you hit the subscribe button.